Oh, I like that. I wish there was more. <laughs> that is uh, Jenny Scheinman, right, of uh, Canapolis, a moving portrait, which is coming very soon, March 5th, to the uh, Capital Center for the Arts. Lynn Sabian, the uh, marketing manager of uh, Capital Center for the Arts, is with us. And, uh, wow, what uh, this is going to be quite a show. Quite a show coming up on March 5th. If you want to hear more of it, come down on the 5th. You can hear about 75 minutes more. How about that, huh? So so tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Canapolis. I know we're going to have uh, uh, Jenny on with us in just a few minutes to uh, talk a whole lot more about it. But just uh, for those people who are not familiar with it or what the, the concept is, if you could just shed a little light on that, uh, Lynn, that would be terrific. Sure. Uh, Canapolis is a town down south. Uh, It was very, very famous for being the town in which cannon towels, which I'm sure a lot of your uh, listeners are familiar with, were were made. It was a a mill town, a a loom town. Around the Depression era, a photographer by the name of H. Lee Waters went down there with a movie camera, and he took pictures of the locals in the area with uh, the brilliant business plan that people would pay money to go to the local movie house and see themselves up on the silver screen. That so was a he, good idea. What so a concept. Huh? He, he, he did so. He came up with about uh, 200 films total. These pictures, uh, the, these uh, films ended up at Duke University where they became part of uh, Duke's archives. And right around 2009, I believe, somebody from Duke approached Jenny Scheinman and asked her if she would be interested in doing some original compositions based on this uh, vintage footage that they had. They really wanted to get out and get have people become more aware of it. She got together with a filmmaker by the name of Finn Taylor, who took these movies by uh, Mr. Waters, edited it down, and uh, Jenny came up with some original compositions. And this became a, uh, a performance. It debuted at Duke, and it is going around the country now, including at the Capitol Center on March 5th. We thought that it was su- such a wonderful uh, concept that we actually built an entire weekend, or, or actually more time than that, based around the, the Canopolis theme. We have a photo exhibit that's going on right now at the Capitol Center. It's in our Governor's Hall and also upstairs in our Kimball House Mansion, where we've uh, juxtaposed vintage pictures from the Manchester Historical Society with some contemporary pictures by Becky Field. And that will be up through the Canapolis show on the 5th. We also have an event called Warm Cookies and Community on the 5th, uh, which is the same day as the Canapolis show, where the community can come together and really talk about the uh, influence of immigrants into the, the country and the contributions that they have made. We also have a pre-show reception for Canapolis that starts at about 545. The Canapolis show starts at 7 p.m., and then after the show, there is going to be a uh, Q&A with local documentary filmmaker John Graffera. Outstanding. Well, you have a lot of uh, a lot of planning that has been done for this uh, this great event, uh, which will uh, culminate with uh, Canapolis, a moving portrait on uh, March the 5th at 7 p.m. But again, that uh, free photo exhibit in Governor's Hall, the Capital Center for the Arts, is uh, going on uh, through uh, that time. So uh, this is uh, just going to be a fabulous event for the uh, community and uh, features a live score and, uh, as as Lynn mentioned, uh, re-edited footage of Depression-era films. And I guess uh, we'll talk more with Jenny about that, but apparently Jenny, when she saw the films, uh, felt quite a kinship with them. Uh, it says uh, when she first wa- watched the raw footage, the faces on the screen felt weirdly familiar to her, even though they came from a bygone era. Uh, she grew up in a, a small town, apparently, uh, obsessed by ideas of self-reliance, community, and life off the grid, as she puts it. So she felt uh, a kinship with this, and uh, that's the inspiration for uh, the great music that is featured in this uh, Canapolis show. I think it touches into some real human emotions. I don't think that you have to be a Southerner to really have an affinity with what you're right. going to be seeing on the screen. No, I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you. Um, a lot of people will be able to relate to it. 
And uh, my goodness, uh, I guess another source of inspiration came from an unlikely place in rural California as well. And we'll talk with uh, with Jenny about that, too. But again, this uh, this event uh, is underway right now, as a matter of fact. So if you went over to uh, Capital Center for the Arts right now, the uh, the uh, photos would be there, right? You, you, they sure are. Yep. Just go to the box office. Let the people know that you're here to see the photo exhibits. We'll let you in. Uh, in Any time that our box office is open, you can come in and take a look. Outstanding. Outstanding. And uh, I'm going to ask if uh, tickets are still available for, for this event. They certainly are. You can get them either at the box office. You can get them by phone at 225-1111 or online at ccanh.com. All right, but I'm sure it's going to be a popular event, so uh, make your plans now for March 5th at 7 p.m. And uh, prior to that, as Lynn mentioned, the free warm cookies and a community event on March 5th at 4.30. How can you not love an you, event that has warm cookies in uh, the title? Absolutely. I mean, that is that is a great, great idea. And a pre canapolis reception on March 5th. And uh, you can meet uh, Becky Field at that time. So all kinds of reasons to uh, to visit the Capitol Center for the Arts, and uh, in particular the uh, Canapolis show on March 5th at 7 p.m. And, and momentarily we're going to have a live interview with musician, composer uh, Jenny Shinman of Canapolis. How about that? Looking forward to it. Looking forward to that as, as we... Uh, talk more about this great show coming to the Capitol Center for the Arts. And uh, by the way, uh, when we're all said and done here uh, with this segment of the show, we are going to have a pair of tickets to give away. So that's a great reason to stay tuned as well. So we'll be giving away a pair of tickets following the interview with Jenny. And uh, you may be our lucky winner. So in the meantime, Lynn, anything else uh, we should know? Well, we have an awful lot going on at the Capital Center for the Arts. We uh, just announced the other day George Thorogood, who is going ah. to be appearing on June 4th. Tickets for that are on sale today if you're a Capital Center for the Arts member. If you're not a member, that's a real good reason to become a member. Uh, the tickets go on sale to the general public tomorrow at 11 a.m. All right. And I do believe that uh, Jenny is joining us right now. And uh, Jenny, how are you this afternoon? Very good. Thanks for asking. Well, where are you calling us from today? I'm calling you actually from uh, where I live, which is in far north California, California, around where I grew up. It's a town called Arcata, uh-huh. um, about five hours north of San Francisco. I'm here for a couple days in between tours and getting ready to head east for this tour of um, Kannapolis. Yes, uh, absolutely. And... Uh, well, tell us a little bit about uh, Canapolis. We, we, uh, Lynn uh, from the Capital Center for the Arts is here with me, and we were talking a little bit about it, but, but uh, you are uh, entrenched in the show, so you, you tell us about it. Um, let's see. Canapolis is a, um, a show that involves a movie that was made out of old footage from the 30s shot by a really interesting sort of itinerant filmmaker who traveled around the Piedmont region, sort of basically the, the Atlantic South. Um, and uh, this was put together by my collaborator, Finn Taylor, and it was cut to music that I wrote for the footage. So I will be on stage with a band, with a trio, wonderful trio featuring um, two other string players. It's a little string band. Robbie Gerso, who plays resonator guitar, and uh, Robbie Folk, who's going to play guitar and banjo. We also all sing. So we're going to be playing um, music that I wrote inspired by this footage and coordinated very carefully with the filmmaker who made the film. Um, we're going to be, you know, uh, on stage right in front of the film, mm. playing along with it. It's about an hour-long program, and then we'll probably play a couple more songs without the film. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful. It's a it's a beautiful program. It's a, you know, it's theatrical in that it has lights and a live show. Um, it also has this beautiful footage that um, has been living in the archives at Duke University for many years and 
you know, has not been seen by very many people at all. Um, it's footage of regular people sort of on the streets of their small towns, kids on the playground, a lot of beautiful close portraits, which, you know, on a movie screen look spectacular. None of it is actually still, but there's a lot of really brief um, portrait style shots, you know, where you'll see um, somebody look into the camera, maybe with a wary look, and then that will melt into a friendly look. So the the cameraman who took this, H. Lee Waters, was, you know, uh, according to his grandchildren, an impish, you know, five foot one, tenacious little guy who <laughs> could kind of charm anyone. And you really see it in the in the expressions on people's faces. Um, it's really beautiful shot shots. It's you know it's depression era footage. It's between 1936 and 1942, and you see it in the footage that that these are very hard times. These are regular people. You know, there's nothing celebrity about any of this or commercial about any of it, and yet they're you know filled with charm and affection for each other and tricks and. It, and yet it's all candid. You know, this is just a man who traveled through these small towns and shot what he saw, you know, gathered people together and and um, just shot them right there. No plans. It's improv, you could say. <clears throat> now, those of us who have grown so, up with technology, I think we kind of forget that at that time during the Depression, um, movie making, while not necessarily in its infancy, was not something that had been around for 50 years, 100 years. Right. Yeah. I mean, one of the remarkable and moving and sort of alarming things that happens when you look at this footage is that you see how our media, our movies and now our social media, have really changed the way we see ourselves and each other. Um the people in this footage, you know, had very likely never seen themselves on footage. Maybe there were a few home movies. They may not have even ever seen themselves in a, in a photograph. And so their sense of how they look and their sense of, you know, their level of self-consciousness um, is, is completely different than what we have now. And it's probably irrecoverable, the, the sort of innocence and truthfulness of the faces in the footage. And that's one of the things that really spoke to me when I saw it, when I saw it in its raw form, um, when I first started working on the project, there's a, there's a, um, you know, it's the way you want to make art. You want to make it real and truthful and, and capture some kind of moment of moment of truth, I guess. And um, it, it, you see how much, in contrast to that time, our mobile devices and our awareness of social media and constant I imaging um, has affected the way we relate to each other on the street and the way we relate to the camera. So you felt an instant kinship to those uh, <laughs> photographs, huh? I and did. I mean, on the one hand, you they do look like they're in a different world, Um on the other hand, they seem very real, and the, the there's a um, kind of guilelessness about their expressions. I also grew up in a very small town in Northern California, um, where, as I said, I've, I've returned to recently. And, um, you know, the community was off the grid. It was a homestead community, and a lot of the aspirations of the community were... Um, to have some sort of, uh, you know, a lot of um, parties, a lot of um, community events, a lot of music and dance and art, and, um, you know, sort of old-fashioned, you know, I, uh, and a lot of acoustic music making. And there was something about the footage that also made me maybe a, a, a little bit... Um, you know, reflect on my own childhood. I think it makes people reflect on their their childhoods, their communities as they are now in, in relation to the film, and also, you know, the, the way their parents and or grandparents might have experienced the world. I recall reading that you were really taken with the phrase, 
city of looms for Canapolis. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you talk about that a little bit? So the show is called Canapolis, A Moving Portrait. Canapolis is a town from which we take a lot of the footage. Um, not all of the footage. The footage is from a lot of different towns around the Piedmont area. But a, a word that was used um, to describe Canapolis, basically a translation of the title, a mistranslation of the title, is City of Looms. Um, it was a town that had a huge textile factory and was a huge employer for many, many years. Um, the image, the central image of a textile factory and also of a loom was something that really helped me write the piece, put it together. You know, there were a lot of, of pieces to weave together, you know, to weave myself into the footage and and make it something that I could really... Um, it wasn't a documentary that wasn't about other people, but was somehow not only about me, but about the present. You know, there was that sort of weaving that one has to do to make modern art. And um, also just the, there's a, a few songs about, uh, well, there's one song called The Mill, you know, about factory workers and about the pride Americans take in work. And um, a lot of the imagery in this footage is, are mills and looms and the various the, the sort of industry of of the factory and the textile factory specifically. Um, so that was I wrote a piece um, called City of Looms. Let's see, it goes. I'm going down to the city of looms. Going to meet my destination. Going to breed my family tree to someone with a southern sound. I'm going down to the city of looms going to bring my thread and needle, going to lay my burden down, down on southern ground. And then it's got sort of a funny little bridge. It says, you got those and I got these. I can share my cooties with who I please. You know, I can share my cooties. I can, it's the bravery Mm -hmm. in working with something from the past, working with a culture you don't necessarily know. I was definitely working with footage that was originally segregated and I was integrating it and working with all the um, difficulty that, that surrounded the um, segregated South. So there was a lot of different elements I was working with. I think the piece structurally is basically a portrait of, you know, it's a portrait of America from many different angles. There's about 15 different pieces in it and they all take, um, a different perspective or angle on our character as it was then and hopefully reflects back on, you know, who we are now. Composer, musician, Jenny Scheinman with us uh, of Canapolis, a moving portrait. And uh, how, how long has this been in existence? Have you performed it uh, elsewhere um, around the country? Yeah. Yes, it was commissioned by Duke Performances, which is at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. We um, we performed it there in October a year and a half ago, and we've done it about eight times since then. We did a wonderful show at the National Gallery, which was wonderful to be in an art museum. Um, really beautiful, big, luxurious screen and, and big packed house. We did it at several universities. And um, we're also, you know, doing this, doing your, the show um, for you as part of a tour of the Northeast. So it's starting to get out there. Yeah, it feels very timely, and I feel really lucky to be doing this particular piece of all the things I do right now as, you know, the, the world and Americans are thinking about our national character and um, who we are and what we're capable of. Jenny, do you think it would be possible to do a piece like this 75 or 80 years in the future uh, with, with people using kind of the, the relics of contemporary society? And do you think that there would be anything that someone from 75 or 80 years in the future would think would be innocent about our society today? That is such a wonderful question. That makes me want to do that sci-fi piece <laughs> next, you know, to do one, to, to use footage that we have of our culture as if it were being done 80 years from now. That's such a wonderful idea. Um, I, I hope that we become more and more 
um, kind to each other and are able to work together as communities. You know, it's an ebb and a flow. And, um, you know, in optimistic moods, I agree that the arc of history is toward justice and, you know, evolution. But um, there are moments where we battle things. You know, you brought up the subject of um, media and video and movies and how that affects our culture. And I think that's a battle that we're dealing with right now. Um, I do think we're probably moving, we move away from innocence. And with that, we we lose a certain um, freshness in our relations with each other. But hopefully, we, you know, if we keep looking back, I mean, one of the important things about this piece is that it it reflects on our character through the eyes of history. And that's something that we have to continually do in order to, you know, make sure our art goes in the right direction. But I don't know. I, you know, so many, so many sci-fi novels and predictions are dystopian. I try to be hopeful. Um, but I'm sure there is some innocence that we have now that we should cherish and, and think about that maybe we, we want, to, want to hold on to or might lose with, um, you know, in the changing, very rapidly changing world. Well, Jenny, we, we look forward to it. I know you've had a, a great career in addition to uh, Canapolis, uh, in, including some uh, top ten albums and uh, some uh, highly acclaimed albums that you've, uh, you've been a part of. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I want to first tell you that I have an album that's coming out. I just got the pre-order link, which means that it can be ordered. It's not in stores yet, not on you know iTunes and Amazon yet, but it is available. I'll have them at the gig. Ah. And the, the, this um, new album is actually music. It's all the instrumental music from the show. Oh, wow. And I wrote a huge amount of music for the show, I think maybe three hours worth of music, and then we just matched it up with the footage and mm-hmm. picked the stuff that was best. And a lot of that is instrumental music. So all of this, this new album is all instrumental music with the people from the show, Robbie Gersto and Robbie Folks, who um, your listeners should know was just up for two Grammys and is an incredible songwriter and um, musician and character. And the other two people on the album are my longtime collaborator, Bill Frizzell, um, and um, Danny Barnes, who's a brilliant banjo player. So that's coming up, and that is my, I believe it's my ninth album. Wow. I've been making albums since about 2000, and um, two of them have vocals on them, The Littlest Prisoner, which was on Sony a couple years ago, and an eponymous you know, album called Jenny Scheinman. The rest of them are instrumental and sort of roughly stuck into the jazz bin, Um a lot of them are with Bill Frizzell and various other musicians that I have long connections with through living in New York for almost 15 years. Um, but I'm really excited about this new one, and I'm so glad I'll have it in hand for these gigs. I really wanted to uh, preserve some of this project in, a, in an album. Um, so well, that I'll is fabulous. So, And it will be available for sale uh, on March 5th at the Capitol Center for the Arts. Absolutely. Thank you, Jenny. We really appreciate your calling in today. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, there'll be a time after the show to uh, meet with the audience and, you know, sell and sign CDs, but more importantly, talk to people about their experiences. So um, I really look forward to the whole thing. And thank you for um, having me. We look forward to seeing you. It's our pleasure. Jenny Great. Scheinman, thank okay. you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on March 5th in Concord. Great. Okay. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. So uh, that's going to be quite an event and uh, quite a weekend surrounding it already. Uh, The photo exhibit in Governor's Hall for the next uh, couple of weeks leading up to the event. First time shown in Concord, a combination of uh, vintage pictures of immigrants by the uh, Manchester Historical uh, Historic Association and uh, contemporary pics by uh, Becky Field of uh, New Arrivals. So, uh, Quite an event, the warm cookies and community coming up on the 5th at 4.30, the pre-Canapolis reception 
at uh, uh, on March 5th. You can meet Becky Field, the show itself at 7, and then a, a post-show Q&A with local documentary filmmaker John Graffaire. And uh, that is all uh, taking place on Sunday, March the 5th. So, Lynn, you have put together uh, quite an event for the 5th of March. Jenny, when she was putting together the show, said that she'd really tried to uh, get a sense for what it was like to live at the time. So uh, hopefully during the post Q&A, she can share a little bit more about what she learned through that process. Yeah, absolutely so. Well, just fabulous. And again, here's here's the, the good part. Tickets are available, but we have a pair right now to uh, give away. So if we have uh, piqued your interest or if Jenny has piqued your interest about Kannapolis, um, give us a call right now, caller number three, for a pair of tickets for Sunday evening, March the 5th, Capital Center for the Arts. So caller three, one 823 1077 is our number. And uh, Lynn, before we wrap it up, you uh, mentioned uh, George Thorogood on June 4th. What else uh, on the schedule coming up? Well, in addition to Kannapolis coming up on the uh, the weekend of the 3rd to, to the 5th, we have other events going on in the building as well. We have Rhiannon Giddens and Dirk Powell, who will be playing on Saturday, March 4th at 8 p.m. The previous night, we have Capital Steps coming in mm. for a, uh, a uh, political satire. That show is uh, put on by Catch Community Housing. It is a fundraiser for the organization. So if this is a cause you believe in, please come out and uh, support them. We also have the National Tour of Pippin coming on May 11th. We have a Michael Jackson tribute, Who's Bad, on yeah. May 19th. Wow. And one show that is uh, not unsurprisingly, it's, it's, it's doing re- really, really well, is Tape Face, which some of your listeners might know of from America's Got Talent. Oh, okay. He's going to be coming on May 21st. Tape Face? Tape Face. Oh, okay. Yep. And what's, what's that all about? He is a mime. He performs with a big piece of uh, duct tape or yep. gaffer's tape uh, across his mouth and is very humorous. <laughs> okay. I'll have to take your word for it. I have to check it out on YouTube or something. Oh, he's got a lot of yeah. tapes out there. Yeah, he's, he's a lot really of tapes hysterical. out there for tape face. Yes. A lot of tapes for tape face. <laughs> <laughs> and then on June 11th, we have uh, the 1970 super band America, Sister Golden Hair, oh, Horse With yeah. No Name, and countless other hits as well. Yes, indeed. So uh, that'll be a great show. All great shows coming up. CCANH.com for more information. And again, we have a pair of tickets to give away for Canapolis, a moving portrait coming up March 5th at 7 p.m. with all kinds of events as we have outlined surrounding it uh, that afternoon starting at 4.30. So uh, give us a call right now if you'd like a pair of tickets. Caller number three again at one 823 1077 that is our number and uh, that i believe is going to wrap it up for this edition of curtain call the good news is lynn you will return one week from today yeah our schedule more our schedule was off a little bit this month yeah. because of the uh, spring training right but the good thing about it is we get to uh, have back-to-back episodes there you go so next thursday lynn will be in and uh, we look forward to that as always lynn sabian Marketing Manager, Capital Center for the Arts. We appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to be here, and we'll be talking to you from Pennsylvania. That's right. I'll be in Reading, Pennsylvania, one week from today.